We are on a small break from the USGS A to Z series, and I have something special for you today. A friend of mine has told me something interesting about the United Nations Environment Program, and it literally begs me to create a new video. You know I am allergic to hypocrisy and intellectual dishonesty, and this is a big one. Naturally, this is not an isolated incident, but now we get a clear indication that the higher-ups at the UNEP are wishy-washy when dealing with potential partners in climate change action. First, we check what the UNEP is about. Let's check their website. It says, The United Nations Environment Program is the leading global environmental authority that sets the global environmental agenda promotes the coherent implementation of the environmental dimension of sustainable development within the United Nations system and serves as an authoritative advocate for the global environment. Now, this is very promising. They are the leading global environmental authority that sets the global agenda. Basically, this means that they are the part of the UN that determines what they want to communicate in terms of climate change and how they think mankind can solve this conundrum. So far, so good. Let's consider their mission to provide leadership and encourage partnership in caring for the environment by inspiring, informing and enabling nations and peoples to improve their quality of life without compromising that of future generations. And that's perfect, I wholeheartedly agree. So what went wrong? A non-governmental organization called the World Nuclear Association wanted to become a sponsor for the Sustainable Innovation Forum, which is being organized by the UNEP and Climate Action. The Sustainable Innovation Forum is one of the places to be when you want to participate in creating fertile ground for energy technologies. You are visible to policy makers and decision makers. People are going to talk about your organization and particularly what you stand for in the fight against climate change. So I think that this is the perfect place for a pro-nuclear non-governmental organization to be visible and to participate. So let's consider the mission statement of the World Nuclear Association. The World Nuclear Association is the international organization that represents the global nuclear industry. Its mission is to promote a wider understanding of nuclear energy among key international influencers by producing authoritative information, developing common industry positions and contributing to the energy debate. So isn't that what the Sustainable Innovation Forum is for? That's exactly where the World Nuclear Association is supposed to be. So let's see what they are about. Taking place alongside COP23, adjacent to the Beulah Zone, the Sustainable Innovation Forum brings together six, more than 600 carefully hand-picked delegates, including ministers of energy and climate change, blue chip CEOs, mayors, responsible investors, development banks, green entrepreneurs, and media. For two days, packed of capacity building, networking, collaboration, and deal-making that will galvanize and fast-track the green economy. Governments, cities, and regions from the 152 countries that have ratified the Paris Agreement must now meet their international climate change commitments. So they are looking for the clean energy, low-carbon transport and finance solutions to make this a reality. Sustainable Innovation Forum 17 provides a world-class lineup of keynotes, panel discussions, networking sessions, live interviews, innovation spotlights, CEO panels, mayor's breakfast briefings, and much 
more. So there we have it. It really is the place to be. Practically everybody who matters in terms of energy and climate change are here. It has become abundantly clear that nuclear energy is an essential part of the solution. However, why is it that the World Nuclear Association has been rejected as a sponsor? I don't understand it. I suspect that there are two very important elements here. First, why would accepting the World Nuclear Association pose a risk? And second, what is the UNEP's communication strategy on nuclear? Here we venture into the realm of speculation, so what I am going to tell you next is completely personal, and I suspect that I can point out why there is hypocrisy and intellectual dishonesty at play here. As for the first aspect, a sustainable innovation forum is a feel-good gathering. People gathering there are looking for ways to either sell their vision and product or to offer their endorsement. As it stands, nuclear power has an image problem. When I search for the raison d'etre for the Sustainable Innovation Forum, I find this little list of subjects they want to bring to the attendees' attention. Renewable energy, circular economy, sustainable land and water management, carbon markets, climate finance, and climate innovation in emerging regions. The buzzword is right at the top, isn't it? Renewable energy, that's good karma. Nuclear, that brings bad karma. It seems that they don't want it there. The strategy, to me, looks like ignoring nuclear energy exists altogether. I wonder whether Fortran is going to stay quiet about the fact that they run a light water reactor in Finland. Why is it perfectly fine to accept sponsors who are part of the nuclear industry, but not to accept sponsorship from an association which stands for the ideals and outstanding track record the industry has to offer? Do note that there are sponsors who have the same job in representing the renewable energy industry and have been accepted by the UNEP. I wonder how the higher-ups at UNEP are going to explain this can of worms they have opened themselves. Let's see what else they want to communicate. Focus on successful implementation. No more theory. Two years after the CUP21, leading figures in climate change mitigation are ready to present on real-life case studies and reflect on their experiences. From energy, transport, landscape resilience to waste management and climate finance, key topics will be addressed from a practical perspective that will showcase innovation and best practice. So... Was there any emphasis on nuclear at COP21? I recall James Hansen, Kerry Emanuel, Ken Caldera and Tom Wigley being there and telling the world that COP21 basically was a disappointment because it really didn't address the actual problem, which is that this overly optimistic emphasis on renewable energy is actually putting us on a back track when mitigating damage from climate change is concerned. But that study of the climate system has very strongly led us to the conclusion that we are incurring unacceptable risk for a future generation. I think that's why we're all here. Solve the problem. Now, as uh, Ken properly said, there are a lot of people who see this as an opportunity to advance one agenda or another. Okay, I think we have to be conscious of that. It's not necessarily a bad thing. But why are four climate scientists who don't have strong backgrounds in nuclear physics here talking to you today about nuclear energy? It's because we're scientists and we can do the math, right? If we want if we truly are sincere about solving this problem, unless a miracle occurs, 
we are going to have to ramp up nuclear energy very fast. That's the reality. That's not my ideology. I don't care whether it's nuclear, like uh, my, my friend Ken said, we don't care whether it's nuclear or solar or hydro, whatever combination works. The numbers don't add up unless you put nuclear power in the middle. If the organizers of the Sustainable Innovation Forum are serious about solving the energy and climate crisis, they would make nuclear energy part of the discussion. And they may have unwittingly done so, even though it's not on the agenda. One of the best organizations to include, which has even offered to partner up in a sponsorship, would be the World Nuclear Association. But we may note that there is probably a cordon sanitaire concerning nuclear power at these great events. Its absence on the agenda speaks volumes. It's the elephant in the room, the undesirable solution, born out of ignorance, intellectual dishonesty, and cowardice. Thank you for watching.